you can see up there. Should I keep calling myself Mr. 789? I have no idea. I don't know. It's not, it's not something I know. I don't know, but we'll see. But in any case, we are here in the next pro series of the day. And it is going to be Austria versus Massa. It is such a treat to be casting this for you guys. Once again. Uh, not once again, but um, yeah. Uh, once again? No, I don't think we've ever had Australia versus Massa. This is new. Australia versus Massa is new news. It's new news. Not fake news. New news. Pew news. What am I saying? Not important. Actually, it is kind of important, considering uh, I am guessing, but it's, 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 it's whatever. It's not important. All right. Here we go, just trying to finalize everything. Look as though Masa is gonna be a little bit late. Meanwhile, we are just gonna chill here with Astria. Just kind of, you know. Just kind of chill for a second. I am tired. I kind of woke up a little, uh. A little somewhere, and it just was a. Uh... What am I saying? Okay. I just kind of woke up a little bit early, and man, it was I'm, I'm a little uh, I'm a little tired, so uh, I'm, I'm still gonna have a nice energy snack. I have my green tea here. I have my green tea here, which is never mind. I don't. Uh, yeah, literally more of that went in my hand than in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> That's about as good as it's gonna get, as it's gonna get for me for the next hour and a half. You've been warned. All right. Uh, one, there we go. We're just gonna go ahead and wait, chill out for a sec as we wait for Masa to show on up. And we have some time. Masa, known for his, at least from whenever I cast his games or whenever I see him play, he's a very micro heavy player. He likes his micro a lot. He's kind of like, um, he's like, he's like Diet Bion, you know? He's like Diet Bion, like, like, you know. When you want a really intense macro game, but you don't really want it to be like that super duper great micro. When it's just. Hmm, how do I explain this? Masa is like Diet Bion. He's kind of like, um. You know, it's like when you don't really want Beyond Beyond, but you still kind of want the taste of Beyond in your mouth, especially since he left for military service and I'm sad that I won't be able to see him. Have some Diet Beyond. Otherwise known as Masa. But that's, I'm not trying to take a, 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 a jab at anybody in particular here. I mean, I think Diet Coke is okay and delicious. I also think Coke is delicious. I also think that Coke is... <laughs> in all seriousness, Master's is a really great player. He's a great guy. We can have some great games. I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay. There we go. We're just going to chill here for a second as we wait for Master to show up. The beauty process is going to begin, so... I'm just going to relax for a little bit here. Regather my thoughts as we wait for Massa to go ahead and show on up. Oh. Okay, okay. Mm, is Master here? Master's here! Oh my god, okay. <clears throat> I mean, um... Mm. Oh, would you look at that? Master's here. He's ready to uh, start the series. Should be should be a fun one. Good. Master's here. Ah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, um, there we go. Alright, we're gonna start the veto process. We're gonna be on Central. He'll make, and the veto is already done. Okay. Oh, actually, Masa only has four more MMR than Astria. Really? Let me. Okay, actually, let me look on. Uh, 
I'm gonna cut the GM. Um, let's see. 9,000 career games. That is pretty impressive. If your name is Astria. Uh, ladders GM. Where is Astria? I know Astria is somewhere up here. Hello? Is there a GM? Hello, hello? Alright. Um, awesome. Uh, where is Astria? I know Astria is somewhere up here. Aven A. Avila. That's the Joker. That's Bioice. Who's not part of Alpha X? Woot Boot. Can I get a Woot Boot? And, uh, is he in contender? I guess it's the new season, so it doesn't really count. Alright, but his MMR is 57 something? 57 something? Wait, ugh, you profile. MMR, 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 which is really insane. And then Masa is. 6385, so they literally are like four MMR away from each other, which is pretty fun. That is pretty nutso, in the butt zone. Butt zone? No, butt zone. I said butt zone, not butt zone. I said butt zone. Butt zone! Okay, <laughs> no more butt zone. Butt zone is nothing new, everything bagel. Nothing can replace everything bagel. Except for possibly butt zone. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just thinking about what I want. Okay, are we ready? Ready. I wonder if they're gonna ask me if I'm ready. Do they, I think they just need to ask the players if they're ready. Uh, my hair! Okay. Alright, game number one! Let's rock and roll. It should be an extremely close series, an extremely high level series too. It's Masa versus Austria? Are you kidding me? That's gonna be rocking. That's gonna be rocking. Not, it's not gonna be rocking, it's gonna be rocking and rolling. You guys don't know how much that means to me. Now, I know this just looks like two random Masters players, but they're not. Astria took. Uh, took on special at Chisadelphia. He lost, of course, but like he took him on still. And Masa, everyone knows Masa. Masa's a, a from Team OSCE. He's been doing good stuff. He's a good man. Again, he's been playing a little under the radar recently, but you know what? I think we're gonna we're in for uh, we're in for a good fight. All right, let's go ahead and introduce our players. Spawning the bottom right hand position of King's Comb, representing Alpha X. It is a blue Protoss player, Azrael. And his opponent spawning the top left down position of King's Cove, representing OSCE, it is Masa. Alright, so last series, Alpha X Pro Series, we did a TVZ. Thankfully, this is not a T nor a Z, this is a P. And, well, I guess it's half, t it's, it's half TVZ in the fact that it's like PVT. Uh, if that counts, but Astriel. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a very standard build. Now, I can talk about Protoss a lot better than I can talk about Terranazurg, so I'm very happy that this is... <laughs> that, that we have this to talk about. Um, and, uh, yeah, just gonna go ahead and wait and see what Astriel wants to do here. Now, King's Cove, again, very big map, but if you're Protoss, you gotta be worried about a couple things. Uh, you gotta be worried about uh, siege tank pushes, on this map especially. Uh, they can be killers. Like, killer killers, because, you know, you have to come down a ramp in order to defend and break out against a third, uh, against the CC, or against a siege tank. And if you're Terran, uh, well then, y I think defending is kind of fine as a Terran, because uh, you have to go up a ramp, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, I think Colossus may be good here, just for the fact, just because of the fact that pushing uh, could be a little bit of a problem. Uh, if you try to go with Storm and Charge Ross and stuff like that, I mean, sure, if you move across the map, there's this really wide area to attack with, uh, to attack into, but there's, you know, there's not really too many areas which you can come from, and, you know, Terran can really limit your options that way, so. I think Colossus would be good here for splash damage, I don't know, uh, you know, it's not, it's not necessary, of course. If you go for Charge Ross Storm, I still think this is plenty of surface area, so. I think any, um... Any anything that the Perhaps Astrusia should be fine, though it should you should know that it's probably not going to be a very feasible thing to try and break turn when they're on three bases. I mean it's just, you know, up a ramp, it, like one or two sea strengths, one or two liberators, it's gonna be a nightmare to try and come up here against the Terran. So probably gonna see Astria play a longer sort of game, making that stalker first out of that gateway, not gonna be a hmm, kind of interesting, not gonna be a an, an adept, actually, which is kind of weird. Um and still no tech coming out for our friend Astriel. Here we go. Rubik is gonna go ahead and come on in. Not gonna get that uh, probe, just barely gonna be fine. Gonna go ahead and micro pretty well. Uh, and actually, he's gonna go ahead and get a probe. Oh, he's gonna get two! And the Rubik's gonna get out with his life. If this were an adept, that would not have happened. I can guarantee you. 
Now, a sentry on the way, too. There should be a Twilight Council, but unfortunately, the probes weren't mining gas, so... If you wanted to go for a Twilight Council, it's a very delayed build uh, for Astri. And still no tech from him. Uh, just another Stalker. What? That's crazy. Loco, I say. Uh, does he want any tech? You need you need tech against... There we go, Twilight Council at the 3 minute 10 second mark. Yeah, That's a little late. But I guess better late than never. Uh, definitely not going to be hitting any sort of, you know, spicy timings with this. Uh, Sentry wins the... I think Sentry wins against the Reaper if the Reaper doesn't hit the KDA charge. But if the Reaper hits the KDA charge, then the Reaper wins against the Sentry. I think that's how it works out. I'm not sure. I just remember hearing that somewhere. Uh, and yeah. There are also some new changes to consider. The fact that Warp Gate finishes 10 seconds earlier, like, like Warp Gate is going to finish here very soon, which is actually pretty cool. Tempest is a little slower, but Warp Gate's a little faster, so, eh, what are you going to do? I'm happy about that. Did I just get a notification? Wait, did I just get a Streamlabs? I don't even have Streamlabs as a source. How did I get it as a notification? Oh, I think I know how. Never mind. Okay, but <laughs> we'll fix that after the game. Right now, who's anything Phoenix coming up for Astria? She's a natural. Sees the medevac. Now let's see what the Terran has been up to. Just gonna go ahead and go for a drop into a siege tank push on two bases. It looks like a fairly standard thing. Uh, the tech lab on here is a little odd, but not too weird. We haven't seen, uh, you know, builds like this happen. Uh, where oh, actually no, he's not gonna go for a banshee or a raven or anything. He's just gonna, just gonna go ahead and use the the starport for the re for its reactor. Okay, or for the tech lab. Gonna go ahead and probably search stem there. So that's pretty cool. And a third base coming down for Masa as well, obviously. So, Masa's gonna come on into this base over here. Gonna go and send down the Widow Mine. It's gonna... Ooh, if he targeted this Doctor, he probably could've gotten it. Ooh, very good micro so far. Wants to get the most value out of that Widow Mine as possible, but there's more and more, uh, uh Stalkers coming by the minute. There he goes. Uh, you know, Widow Mine does end up going up. And a lot of net one time from this, uh, base here. So, overall, some good damage there from Masa. Nice and mining time, you know. Makes it a little bit annoying and actually finds an opening in the main to get five? Now six? Whoa! This isn't like this isn't on Game Heart, is it? <laughs> this was never on Game Heart! No! <laughs> oh that's okay. Uh, no th third base from Astria just yet. I'm actually going for a uh, Robo Bay right now. Robo Bays are cheaper now, they're 150, 150, which is pretty darn dirt cheap, and and uh, Robo facilities are actually cheaper now too. Uh, they are 150 uh, 100. So, you know, uh, Robotech has, has gotten, like, a lot cheaper. So, we have been seeing some people experimenting with Colossus. Probably not as a direct result of those buffs, but they definitely did help. When you have, like, an extra 50 minerals and 50 gas or something. Or maybe just an extra 50 minerals, I don't know. Or an extra 50... Yeah, an extra 50 minerals and an extra, like... Like, 100 minerals and 50 gas, that's a lot. That's like, Having another Stalker is very important, because generally, uh, Colossus play is weak to... You know, uh, not having enough KP units on the ground and just, you know, getting dropped everywhere, so... Uh, I, I can definitely s understand uh, why some people want to go for this, um, you know, want, want to start bringing this um, Colossus tech back into the meta. You know, especially, especially if you have, like, one extra unit on the ground. I think it's very, you know, it's, it's a very feasible thing to do. Masa still has this drop over here, probably gonna come in at the last second to backstab um, Astra if he ever tries and moves these uh, Stalkers and get units out of position. Uh, War Pressman is finished on up for Astra. He's gonna go and send that to the main base and try and assert himself on his other map. Oh! Should probably focus that medevac. He can get it! He can get it! Oh, uh, if he stepped forward, maybe he could've. Uh, no stim just yet, actually. Uh, gonna finish up here very soon. As well as plus one, so he needs to be respectful of that. Stim, uh, pretty normal, uh, time is finishing up here on the seven minute mark. And, Masa... One thing I remember about Masa is that he was very good at scanning those, um... Scanning and getting those observers, but that's, uh... That's a tricky guy to spot right there. That's a, that's a tricky boy. That is not easy. Nope. Scan goes down. No idea where. There it is. Scan's the natural. Oh, probably so we can like, drop more shit in there, isn't it? Yeah, probably wants to go for a drop there or something. Alright, one cost is finished on up. Astra says that's good enough for me. Let's rock and roll. Another scan probably comes down. Oh, over there, for the observer. What was I saying? He's gonna get in those observers. Uh, now, two siege tanks. I think this is very safe. Uh, uh, you know, this is, this is safe enough. It's safe enough for, uh, Masa. Uh, uh, Ash is gonna move in here. He can ping on top of the tanks. There we go. He does ping on top. One tank goes down. Another one's gonna 
probably follow shoots only after. Needs to pull back these stalkers now. Let the zealous tank. Uh, Colossus doing Colossus stuff. Yep, this is a. Yeah, yeah, that happens. That happens sometimes. Had to be careful. But overall, not too bad. He lost a couple of. Uh, got, lost a couple of stalkers there, but he did end up getting uh, two siege tanks, so I'm definitely very happy about that. Did he get any workers in the main? I think he got. Not. Did he get 11? No. Or maybe yes, actually. There's a lot of work to skill for uh, Masa, regardless. So that kind of sucks if your name is Masa. Medivac's still here, just chilling. And Astrid is slowly building up that Colossus count. Now, he went up to two Colossus. Generally, you go up to three. Three is when I think, generally, that they become the biggest threat. Like, two Colossus are scary. Three is like, you need a response. Otherwise, you're probably not breaking through that Protoss player. Mm, unfortunately, this Medivac still... Gonna be able to backstab Astrea here, and it's well, actually a little bit unfortunate uh, army supply over here, as Astrea only has half the army supply of Masa. And here's the problem, uh, what are you gonna do against this drop? Of course, you can, you can warp in, but these Zealots aren't gonna be able to... Well, they actually are gonna be able to take care of it, so never mind, but you have to be very careful. Storm is not done yet, he's been chroning it like a madman though, so it should be here by the time he tries to push up this ramp. And this very splash heavy style, I think, is very good on King's Cove, because if you force your opponent to come up a ramp, no! Oh, Astria! Oh, didn't see that coming from that side, so no shield batteries for you. Probably, I wouldn't mind a storm on those Vitamines. I would not mind a storm on those Vitamines at all. Uh, there we go, but now there's some pro damage going down as well. Uh, Massa finding himself an opening here. However, the Colossus and Storm are just going to be a little bit too much for him to deal with. And actually, I like this. Uh, now that he has Colossus and Storm, literally all Asher needs to do is have like a million gate... Oh boy. Ooh boy, you guys want to know what ain't good? This ain't good, he has to split his army up pretty well. This seems to be fine. Masa may actually just drop right on top of this army, but the yeah, Mortal and Storm probably would have been enough to defend against that. Masa, playing his very signature style, making a bunch of buy units, mangling them to his heart's content. Shield battery, healing the hell out of that Colossus. Is it going to be enough? The Marauders are getting on top of it. Oh, what good play there from Astro. That was good. He specifically targeted that shooter battery onto that Colossus. That was amazing play. I, he only has like two th main areas of uh, attack that he has to defend against. And now that he's making uh, more gateways, as soon as he has like a good base to his army, uh, he still has uh, a Colossus, right? If he makes another Colossus and goes across the map, uh, as soon as us, as soon as Master is done attacking, it should be an absolute nightmare for Master to try and hold back at home. But you don't have to hold back at home if you always are on the other side of the map, which is the cool part about Terran, is that they can keep you on your side of the map pretty much better than any other race, right? Because if you move across the map, there's going to be drops in your main, there's going to be run by in the extra. That Nexus is dead. That is a dead... Nope, it's not a dead Nexus. Never mind. But it's possibly a dead Nexus. Uh, the, it's a lot of dead probes at the very least. A lot of them are going to end up going down. Uh, good trade here by Masa, getting as much as he can. Oh, fatty storm! <laughs> Ooh, I feel a bit... <laughs> well, uh, went all horsey there for a second, but, uh, jeez, that was... Yeah, that was good. Ooh, that was a good storm. Huh, I get a little, uh... It gets me going, you know. Alright. Um, what, what was that saying? Oh, yes, Astria. So, basically, just needs a nice gateway, uh... uh and, and I still meet to his... He needs meat to his army. He has, he has meat to his army. He should be fine. Uh, unfortunately, he does not have that, and now... Ooh, he's gonna get it right off this Colossus. Class is absolutely gonna go down, uh, Immortal as well, and it's just gonna pick it up and boost on off. Loses a couple of medivacs in the process. One, two, three, probably could get some more. Now, does he set up that War Prism? No, he doesn't have the War Prism. It would be, what's really, if he had the War Prism, I would be very, you know, I'd be very happy for him. Uh, because he'd be able to, like, keep, you know, do some War Prisms in the natural of Masa. Because that's how you get Terrans off of your side of the map. You put, you force them on their side of the map, you have big War Prisms of charge bots, and they can't send any more units to your side of the map. Uh, gonna go ahead and pick up another meta back there. Uh, Masa, again, is, I mean, he's finding good damage, but he's starting to get pushed back slowly but steadily, and now if Masa, or rather Astrid, just keeps track of these meta backs, uh, he shouldn't be able to get broken by, uh, Masa anymore. Uh, Astrid, though, very starved mineral-wise. He has good saturation, just has to go ahead and move these probes over there, and just, you know, make sure he spends his money, gets his warp gates going, he has 8, which is good, especially considering he has 2 robos. This should be enough to hold up the top here, no problem. Gotta make sure you don't storm your own crap, though. And this is a good defensive position for our friend Austria. Uh, no, there's not really many ways Masa can come up this ramp. I would like to see these units a little bit further back, so we, Masa can't beat the storms off this ramp as easily. Um, yeah, Klaus is actually... Oop, 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 a little bit of a bad mistake there. Oh my goodness, uh, a little bit of overreach there. I needed a more. 
We need more meat. That's the problem with uh, Asher's army right now. He just has no meat. He just keeps getting picked apart. He has no meat. His Colossi are dying. He hasn't made a Colossus in God knows how long. Uh, which, you know, when you have a tech advantage like Colossus, you know, you want to you wanna explode it. And unfortunately, he just didn't have enough. Look, these are the huge storms, but like, he, there's just no meat to capitalize off it. And even worse is that, um, you know, he, he lost his tech advantage by not making any more Colossus. Masa never had any plans to make Vikings, you guys. It was just, it's just bio all the way, and unfortunately, Ashria could not deal with it, and, you know, it's just a little unfortunate. It's a little unfortunate if your name is Ashria. If you're an Ashria fan, you're obviously hurting a little bit. The upgrades are looking okay. Uh, plus two attack, plus one armor. Plus two armor should be finishing here relatively soon. But I just don't think there's much you can do. Yeah, there's units in the main. Just getting all the pylons. There's literally not a single pylon in the main to power anything. That is... That is going to be the nail in the coffin, actually. There's going to be nothing produced for such a long time. Uh, yeah, he just can't do anything. It's going to float 2,000 minerals, and yeah, GG is called. And OSCE's Masa is going to go ahead and take a very convincing game number one off of Austria. Whoa, Nelly. That was a little bad. That was a little rough. That was a little rough around the edges. <laughs> um, yeah, um... It was going good for Masa, it really was. It wasn't going horribly, but he's, you know, he started losing his Colossus. Um, I mean, it just feels like he didn't have any meat on the ground, but at the same time, he needed to keep on making those Colossus just to, you know, overemphasize his tech advantage, because if you just keep on making gateway units against what Masa is doing, you're eventually gonna die. I mean, like, that's the truth of it. Bio units are better than gateway units. He'll kite you into Widow Mines, he'll pick off four or five Zealots here, a couple Stalkers here, and he won't lose anything, and then all of a sudden you find yourself down 70 supply, right? So you have to keep making those Colossus, and you have to be careful about what units you lose. I, again, I think if he had a War Prism to kind of get Mousa off his back so he could mass up a little bit more so we can relax and macro better, I think that we could be looking at a very different game. But, hey, you know what, shoulda, coulda, woulda, that's the story of StarCraft, and we are gonna go ahead and jump on into game number two. Astra gets to choose whatever map he wants, and uh, I'm very interested to see his choice. <laughs> okay, he wants Kairos Junction. All right, all right. I have no idea why he would choose Kairos Junction. I mean, it's a very standard map, I guess. It's kind of big, but not really. I would say it's even worse uh, if you're trying to defend against what Moss is doing, because it's not. You know, your bases aren't as close together, especially your fourth base. And you know, there's a lot more space to draw. There's a lot more space for counterattacks. So. I'm a, li I'm a little, mm, little curious as to why he's choosing that, but you know what? It's a best of nine. You may have to just go through all the maps anyways. Maybe he just wants to get it out of the way while he feels good. Alright, go go is called. Let's jump on into it, guys. Game number two. <laughs> okay, there we go, there we go. A, li a little bit off of my timing, but that's okay, that's okay.
and I am now filing assault charges against myself for doing that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and introduce our player spawning in the bottom right hand position of Kairos Junction. Representing Alpha X, it is our very own Blue Protoss player, Astria. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand position of Kairos Junction. Representing OSCE, it is the Red Terror player, Masa. Currently up one game to zero in a very convincing fashion. Like I said, this guy is a guy who likes to exploit Terran to its fullest. Attacks over here, attacks over here, drops in your main, blah 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 blah, all sorts of crazy junky action happening. Uh, and really the way to beat this kind of player is throw them off their tempo. Don't let them convince, don't let them take control of the game. You know, go for Dark Templar, go for Blink early on, pressure, you know, have a war prism across the map. Make sure they do not stay on your side of the map at all costs, unless you are an extremely competent defensive player. An extremely competent defensive player. Also, there's a barracks over here, so maybe this won't come into play this game, but it's still not worthy. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh, let's see, Masa is gonna go ahead and rally that barracks inside the main of Astria. With the Reaper, there it is, Reaperoo, Dunkaroo, Shmekaroo, Rackaroo, Rackaroo. Uh, Zealot is coming up for Ash right now. Again, I personally am out of the opinion that a Zealot will help too much against the proxy Reaper. It'd help a little bit, uh, just in chasing the Reaper around, but like, I feel like okay probe macro saves you 100 million rolls that you don't necessarily need to make otherwise, right? Um, really, the way that this Zealot pays for itself is that it, it stops two probes from dying, right? And I think that a good uh, Terran player would just ring around the Rosie all day with his Zealot, so... Yeah, yeah, that is that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, Stalker is gonna be on the way for Ashray. Again, for going that Adept, I guess it's a little safer to go for that Stalker. There we go, Masa is focusing on the getting the workers. There we go. Two of them are very low. He gets us around, almost gets it, not quite. Needs to make sure he mines that gas, mines that gas. There we go, Stalker is out. Uh, Reapers can probably escape through this avenue over here. There's no wall off at the uh, mineral line of Astria because he wanted to wall off his uh, the jumping spot over here, which I think is a much better choice uh, if your name is Astria. And he's gonna go ahead and warp in another, uh, start up another stalker. Still no tech coming out. Uh, I would love to see a proxy pattern or something, but this SCV is probably following that probe, unfortunately. So couldn't find much damage. Two probes going on down so far. A grand total of four probes that went down this game, which is pretty good damage if your name is Masa. Uh, and yeah, still no tech, no Stargate, no Twilight, and Astria is going to go for a Robo facility and not go up to uh, more bases, uh, not take that uh, natural base just yet. Uh, I think he actually wants to go for a 4-gate. Oh, Masa. Masa. This is typical Masa right here. Now, it's probably going to get scouted, two Reapers, not much that hides from these guys, really. Uh, back at home... Making a cyclone, so it's preparing for a preparing for a stargate for follow up probably, which isn't that uncommon. Uh, off of one base, you know, you gotta want to get back on the map. You want to chase out the reapers, and Oracle is a pretty good way to do both of those things. Probe takes the natural, and oh my God, some amazing grenades, amazing movement, and Masa escapes with both of those reapers unscathed. Meanwhile, the f not four gates actually, just three gates. Is he gonna make a? Oh boy, he's gonna go for disruptor drops actually. So. Disruptor drops, I think, have got... Disruptors, I think, in general, have gotten a little bit worse in PBT. Just because of the fact that they don't detonate on contact anymore, so it's a lot easier for the Terran to just, like, micro, uh, counter micro. They have more options, they can, like, they have more time to split, and more importantly, they can, uh, have the option of diving on top of the Disruptor a lot more easier. So, it's a, it's a, it's a very fickle situation. Uh, it becomes more fickle to use Disruptors, and, you know, I, personally, I don't think they're that amazing in PBT anymore, but... That you can still make some magic happen with them, especially if you have like a War Prism and Disruptor. Maybe you get a good shot, maybe you get lucky. You know, who knows? Who knows, right? Anyways, two seconds gonna go ahead and move across the map. Now, they will synergize very well with the Reapers because if though, you know, as soon as these Starkers are like popped up, they won't be able to do anything. Unfortunately, that's not how life works and mm, no engagement to behold. Oh. Raven on the way as well. Disruptor for that War Prism. Again, Astria going for the tech option. I kind of like this as it develops this tech. It's, here's what I like to say. Disruptors are tech when you, for tech's sake. When you need tech, you just kind of make some disruptors, right? I mean, it's just tech when you really need tech. And I think that considering how delayed Astria was this game, they're a fine choice. Now, has to be extraordinarily... Oh. Has to be extraordinarily careful, extraordinarily careful with this War Prism. 
uh, because the Raven has that interference, interference matrix right now, or whatever it's called, that can stop this war prism from A, dropping out the trap, or B, picking it up, so... Uh, and he also has a Viking, and he also has two Cyclones. I mean, if there's something that... <laughs> if there's ever a game in which you're scared that a War Prism is gonna die, it's this game. Uh, uh, quick third base from... Well, not quick third base, but yeah. Third base from Rasa uh, is already finished up here. Uh, pretty good timing on that. 38 to 38 total workers. Uh, and Gravatic Drive is almost done. I think it's gonna wait for that to finish before he goes in, which I think is a fine choice. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go. Not too many SVs here. Probably can't get a juicy shot, but I can get something done. One. Okay, that was like one or two. I think just one. And it's actually probably going to die, considering the path it's taking. Oh, nope, it should be fine. Gravatic Drive is pretty good. Was that Gravatic Drive? 100% dead. He would have had to recall it. Oh, uh, yeah, but now, again, like I said, it's just tech for tech's sake. It's just setting himself on the map, but honestly. Not worth it. There's two there's two more Vikings out right now, and now Astrea, look, he has to come back home. He spent, you know, money on Gravatic Drive and didn't really need to. The Disruptor's okay. I mean, you're never going to be sad about having Disruptors in your army. But I definitely do like this transition to Colossus. It's a lot more solid, and it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot less counterable, I would say. It's a lot less, it's a, it's a lot more consistent splash damage. Uh, not knowing the third base still is Masa. A little weird, if you ask me. I guess he wants to, uh, saturate this base before he lands a third. Which I can definitely understand. But he's gonna enjoy a nice macro advantage as Masa's, or rather Astria's third base only just now went down. And uh, Masa's is already finished, so it's kinda sucks if your name is uh, Astria at the moment. Yeah, Viking's already out. In this game, it looks as though uh, he might go for. Is he gonna go for Vikings to counter? I don't know. Oh, but he gets, a, he gets a thing. He needs to recall. Oh, oh, oh. Time 14. That's does the disruptor. That's okay though. Uh, it wasn't really gonna do it much anyway. No more hacks. Good, good. Twilight Council is coming on down too, as well as additional gateways, which is always great. Was he on two gates this whole time? Yes, he was. That was pretty uh, pretty risque, if you ask me. And he, you know, doesn't have a very impressive army to, uh, you know, accentuate that point. Third base is saturated. For Masa, or at least getting saturated there. He's dropping mules. He's getting his SCVs. He's getting supply blocks to hell and back. My god, but he clears it up, which is good. <laughs> clears it up. He has three Vikings, which again, three Vikings aren't really gonna do much. He didn't throw down a. Well, he does have another star point production, but Vikings are uh, to counter the Colossus are a long way off. Uh, he has two Colossus right now. I think it's just gonna depend on. The strengths of Terran dropping every which way, not really as feasible when you have Siege Tanks as you have to kind of sit there with them and support them. Uh, but yeah, some Siege Tanks behind these rocks will be amazing. I don't think there's much Astria can do, uh, especially considering he's in the middle of the map and Masa is already hitting his third base. That's a little sad. At the, actually, maybe seeing more of just like a base race sort of scenario uh, develop here. Uh, there's not really much uh, anything uh, that Australia can do against this army. If I'm being honest, this is a scary enough army, and in fact, the Raven can actually like disable both Colossus and make him just absolutely invalidated for the entire fight. Um, you know, uh, Astria gunning himself 16 workers from uh, Masa side. A good disruptor notion over there, uh, unfortunately, did not end up uh, getting the shot that he needed, but it's still pretty good nonetheless. A good. Uh, amount of bio at the top of this ramp for Masa. Colossus should be able to handle this fine. If it's micro, there's no micro coming up for Ashria. He doesn't know what to do. He's confused and you no know, Guardian Shield. Uh, didn't have the energy. That sucks. Uh, pull back the Colossus. No, he did not pull back the Colossus, but he's microing on two fronts. Give the guy a break. And it looks like we have a good old fashioned base trade coming out over here. Now, you know what they say never base trade a Terran. Stalkers aren't focusing this Viking. This Viking is gonna get that Colossus. That is so unfortunate. And yeah, I think this is it for Astrea. <laughs> oh, that kind of sucks. Um, but they really, I don't really see anything else that he can do. Um, this, this isn't a particularly big army, but it's a very tech army army. It's an army that can definitely kill uh, a very small Protoss army uh, uh, without a doubt. So, there we go. Oh, disables that uh, thing right there. Uh, good use of the energy. And actually, those others had a very hard time killing that uh, Z-Tank. Kind of weird. Uh, Masa lands the Vikings, he's gonna kill the entire base of Astria, there's nothing left for him at this point. Uh, I don't know what his plan is. Oh, drop it! Oh, well, that's one way to drop it. GG is called, and Masa takes a convincing game number two! This is very scary! This is very scary. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, hmm. Poor Astria. Poor, poor Astria. 
having a lot of problems with the style of that Masa plays. Again, this guy is very aggressive, he's very in your face. I mean, maybe Astrea needs to pull out the, pull out the weird builds. He needs to, you know, every Protoss has, you know, that build, you know. He, they all have, like, that one build, you know. I'm talking about everything bagels. No, no, I promise, I'm done talking about everything bagels. Okay, uh, Colossus. Uh, not Colossus. What am, I, what am I trying to think? What am I trying to think of? Um, Dark Templar, there it is, Dark Templar. Okay, so Dark Templar, I think, would be amazing versus Masa. Because he plays a very aggressive style, and Dark Templar are pretty good against that. They can very good. They're very good at catching you off guard, especially, and they're very good at swinging the tempo in your favor. So I think you know if Ashley pulls it out, it would be a good. It'd be a good choice. I think it'd be a solid choice. But we're gonna have to wait and see. He gets to choose next map as well, so we'll see how he adapts to Masa. We'll see how he adapts. Alright, Asher says, Port Alexander. Oh, again, favoring that, uh, really, uh, those really big maps. Or, not really big maps, but, like, those nice, decent-sized maps with lots of open area. Uh, I don't know about, I just don't know about that. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it's just gonna play into Masa's, I guess it's big, so the reinforcements come longer, but, like, I don't know, I think a smaller map would be better against Masa, because he does seem to multitask a lot, like dropping your main and stuff, and it's easier to defend multiple angles when the map isn't as big, when your bases are closer together, you know? But we'll see. He's a he's a guy. Oh, 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 oh uh, is this on Game Heart? Yeah, okay, it's on Game Heart. Okay, the last one's on Game Heart, too. Oh, my phone's blown up. All right, I think we're almost ready to rock and roll, guys. 45 viewers, I thank you everyone for tuning on in. We, we really do appreciate that here at Alpha X. And we hope you have a good time. If you are enjoying this stream, if you guys could do us a quick favor, maybe up this stream, give us a follow, maybe put us to our favorites. As far as the Star Balloon sticker and showcase goes, guys, I don't know, but you know, you probably know better than I do if you can do any of those things. And one last thing. Be sure to have fun. All right, Port Alexander. Faces far away. Don't know what the Protoss thinking, but he's gonna have it his way. Like a whopper, like a schmopper. Is he gonna be able to stop her? Though Masa's not a her, but he sure does hurt. Woo! Everything bagel solo. Let's go ahead and introduce our players. Spawning the top left hand position of Kairos Alexander. Representing Alpha X Esports. Nope. That's definitely not the score. Boop, boop, boop. Representing Alpha X, it is our very own Astrea. With a low ground pylon. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And his opponent spawning in the bottom right hand position of Port Alexander. Representing OSCE, taking, I think actually that was three games, right? One. No, two games. Taking the first two games in very convincing fashion. It is the Red Terran player, Masa. I'm almost certain we've only played two games so far, right? Yeah, right. Two games. Wait, right. there's a, there was there was Kings Cove, then there was Kairos Junction, and then there's this one. Okay, so this is game number three. All right, so we're right. Uh, both ways is going for some fingery standard stuff. Now I like this wall off from Astray over here. Uh, there is no area in the main for the Reaper to uh, jump up in. Now, we can jump into the main from the natural, but only from the very back of the natural. So, if he walls off the front of his natural, then the Reaper will just have no ability to get into the main whatsoever. Unless he, like, throws a grenade under whatever's there, perfectly spaces it, and gets under the unit while it's in the air. But that would just be... I mean, that would just be ridiculous. Foreshadowing. Now... Uh, Stray does end up scanning everything out, he sees everything is normal, he doesn't stick around, so generally the probe will stick around 
to like the 148 to the 152 mark. Try and see if a Marine comes out of that bunker uh, so we can tell uh, whether or not, um, you know, whether or not there's going to be a Reaper on his side of the map, because if there isn't going to be a Reaper on his side of the map very quickly, he can actually send the first Adept, or whatever he's making, across the map and have another unit out here to defend. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty very cool. Uh, yeah, I sure is going to patrol that point right there, so I guess he's going to wall off. Whoa, don't know it. So I know I said mix it up. I, d I said mix it up. It's definitely my fault. Oh no, this is for the Reaper timing. Never mind. Yeah, he's going to cancel this. 100%. One million percent. See? He just does not want a Reaper coming to the main base. So whatever he's doing, he's being very secretive about it. He's being very sneaky snake about. Very sneaky snake indeed. There we go. Reaper coming on in, and you're gonna get deflected. Nothing you can do really there. Uh, now, I would have to say that this sort of positioning... Okay. Place your bets now. Is he gonna grenade himself over this uh, wall off? I don't think so, because the talker can definitely kill him uh, if he does decide to do so, but that would be cool. I would want to see him try it. Uh, but anyways, uh, this wall-off is definitely going to be a little bit painful in the mid-points mid of the match. Uh, just as far as defending drops go, it's another choke point to defend against. Your cyber core is kind of exposed. You know, there can be a hit group of bio come up here, and they can very easily take out your cyber core, which, can, which is a very big deal. But um, yeah, as far as early game goes, uh, Austria is going to go ahead and reap the benefits. Of, uh, you know, not allowing the Reaper any information in his main base whatsoever. May actually force out a scan if he's lucky. Uh, gonna have to see. I don't think he will. I don't think he will. Ma uh, yeah, Moss is very. I think he just wants to be able to get as much bio as he can, as much money as he possibly can, and then push with bio continuously in the mid game. And that's what he's doing so far. I mean, for the past two games, even this game, for the, all three games so far, he's favored a fast third CC. He wants that economy. He wants to have all that money at his disposal, and he wants to use it. All right. Ashtray probably going to get himself another uh, Marine for his efforts. Uh, is he going to scout that third CC? Yes, he is. And with that, he should be pretty happy to play a little bit greedy for the next upcoming portions of this game. It is a 3cc build, I know, because there's three barracks here. I wasn't paying attention to the production tab all that much, so, uh, you know, don't be like me. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, Oracle is going to try and find his way into the main base. Marines say... And it was not meant for to be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good damage from the Oracle. No need to take any more damage on it. Just go ahead and fight it back. And he's going to go up to three Oracles. Now, I know some people like to actually go for, like, up to four or five Oracles and then shade him with a bunch of adepts. I think that's crazy, but I also kind of like it, so, I mean, why not? <laughs> um, you know, it actually can do a lot against his Marine Heavy style, so... You know, especially if there's not a turret anywhere. But I think he's just going to go up to three Oracles so we can one-shot Marines, one-shot SCBs, and have a decent chance at picking off add-ons. So, yeah. Here we go. Dora Rook will finish it up. I don't think he's going to make any more, especially with how his gas is looking. Uh, probably wants to save that for a charge and plus one and all that good stuff. Mo Gateway is going down. Uh, well, going all the way up to six gates. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. And if I were him, I'd probably want to go up to Storm before throwing down uh, gates number seven and eight. Maybe like a Twilight Council and then seven, eight, or another Forge. Or something, I don't know. Anyway, he's gonna come in with his oracles, get four, maybe five? Yeah, ooh, yeah, five workers, pretty good damage. Uh, mm, he did cancel it, so he's not gonna be able to get these. But he's gonna reactivate them now that I see that there isn't much here. And mm, not gonna dive on top of the add-ons, but now these oracles are out of energy. And here's the scary part, oracles are definitely very helpful in the defense against, um, you know, whatever the team can push at you. Marines are good against, siege tanks are good against, you know, they're just a little bit of extra damage, they have stasis words, they're a little complicated. For the Tyrant to deal with, it's good, but um, unfor oh. unfortunately, I think he's just gonna get stimmed on top of the sentry's gonna get targeted down, and uh, this entire army for him, uh, Astra may just end up dying here. Now, there is some more units working on in, though the sentries probably weren't an amazing idea, that kind of sucks, and now uh, the oracles are also gonna get traded out as well. So, with just a handful of marines, let's take a look at what he actually got for 21 marines, he got. Five sentries, two oracles, five zealots, and a defender a stalker. I mean, look at that. He lost 800 gas there, Moss uh, Astrated. That is just all for just a couple of marines. And look, that is just. And look, now the economy for Moss is getting going. He's throwing down a starport. He's getting his armory base, getting his engineering base, getting his upgrades. I don't think Astra is going to be able to hold on to the mid game. Just based on his track record against them. Um, 
Masa so far, I mean, if Masa's gonna go, Masa is in charge of this game. Like I said, I, I was saying that Astra needs to, he needs to be more proactive, he needs to get into control, he needs to do what he needs to be doing, he needs to be playing his game, and he is absolutely not doing that at all. This is Masa, 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 Masa. Now, Ash is gonna try and make something happen with some aggression. I do like that. Uh, ooh, gonna lose a little, little Marauder here. Uh, needs to pick on up and boost on away. Uh, does Masa. And actually, does he have enough at home to defend against this? Rob. Where the hell is this guy's army? Oh my god, he just has no army, doesn't he? Okay, well, that's also kind of bad. <laughs> So yeah, actually, some good uh, damage from Ashwave, denying mining time, all that good stuff, blah 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 blah. And another big surprise about hitting Masa, though he does have some surprise tapers about to finish on up. Mm, if Ashwave had another warp in here, I'd be very happy for him, but it doesn't seem as though he has a prism uh, to reinforce his push. So yeah, I think this is definitely the end of the push, he did some good damage, uh, stayed a little bit longer than needed to, but that's okay. And it's gonna go ahead and go back home, and actually, at the end of the day, it's not looking that bad, all things considered. Oh, uh, uh, hey, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's because Masa was going for that fourth base, and his engineering base, and his upgrades, and his armories, and his factory, and his star port. So there's a little bit of a lull in the amount of bio he had available. Um, and actually, also, ooh, also he loses the fourth base, that sucks a lot. He does get the cancel off, but still. Uh, you did sacrifice a decent amount to get that fourth base up quickly, and now Masa is gonna uh, feel the sting of that, uh, that, that, that being denied. Zealot's here, gonna get one Marine, as is probably right when all of this is attacking you, there's not much surviving to do, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Fink's gonna go ahead and finish up as well. Is there another. Is, there's not another Forge here, which really sucks, uh, so it's gonna. No, there is. Wait, what? No. We can check. Yeah, only one forge, uh, which is really weird. I would love to see two forges from Ashray. There's no reason not to, especially on four bases. I mean, mineral and, you know, it's not that. M money isn't that tight where, where you can't afford another forge. Uh, okay, Ashray probably needs to back on out here. This is a zealot. That's okay. Keep it calm. Oh, probably a storm here would be amazing. Yep, I was right. And there we go. We're gonna go ahead and drain some energy off these medevacs. And actually a flank of storm, uh, flanking storm, sneaking temper, come on over here, good splits, ooh, I like seeing that, uh, from, uh, Masa, but these units are all so low, and look, all these medevacs just have a good amount of energy, they are gone, no more energy on these bad boys, and look at that, they're gonna go ahead and boost off toward the main, actually, a little bit of a weird choice, uh, these units are definitely now super committed, uh, gonna drop on top of this cannon, has to make sure that he can get into the main base as well, and there is a decent amount of stalkers, but stalkers do not defend against bio, uh, especially when the bio has a uh, 2-2 upgrades uh, advantage over you. Killing some units over here at the 4th base, very smart, and Masa is going to be able to get out with the rest of his units. Let's take a look back home, his 4th base is floating on over to its location, a couple of zealots over there to try and stop it if at all possible with Masa. I mean, he, this guy, <laughs> he really likes his bio, you know? Uh, but yeah, uh, for good reason, his production is really up and running. He's getting it good, he's getting some ghosts out, finally. Uh, but not gonna be out for another couple of minutes, so... If, uh... Here we go. If Ashray can just defend for the time being, uh, against all this fire, he can possibly have a very amazing counterattack uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, he went down to defend a little bit too late, he was a little too indecisive, so, so he will end up losing that fourth base. Uh, very unfortunate there for if you're Ashray, but, you know, eh, what, what are you gonna do? This is a couple of... Mm, Liberators there too. Does he want to go ahead and push? I think you do. I think you want to push right now, because uh, you don't see. Because you know you just picked off a good decent amount of units. You know you know that you know your opponent doesn't have ghosts yet, or if they do, it's very low because he didn't see any ghosts. I would be very very uh, itching to attack right now. And look at this. There's no medevacs out. No medevacs out. Only a couple liberators. But Astria is pulling back defensively. And I, I, I don't like this a lot, I, I really don't, but um, you know, it's, it's hard, it's a hard call to make. The recall does end up going on down for some units. Stalkers come over here, nope, 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 You're, they're still part of that hotkey, nope, that's, uh, that's incorrect, that's not right. Oh boy. Alright, well, Masa definitely does, still has an army supply advantage, he's <sighs> actually struggling here to control his units properly, he's finally getting some sort of... Uh, resemblance of a, a defense here, but he's just not making anything. This fourth base is gonna get cancelled again. Masa, <laughs> very, very low units, all in the red, decides to stim again. Uh, typical Masa. And yeah, now it's a little less likely. Does he even have any ghosts yet? No? Okay. Just Marine, Marauder, Medivac. Maybe a couple of mines for good measure. But definitely no counter splash units. 
Hmm. <laughs> Astro says, you don't want to make ghosts? Fine. Don't make ghosts, buddy. See what happens. See what happens. Yeah, don't make ghosts. Uh, though this is probably just a mistake. Though it's not really morphing them, so it kind of makes me believe that it's not a mistake. So, uh, what the actual hell is going on in this game? There we go. Uh, is he actually just keeping all of these for Storm? Is he just not making Archons? Is he just having problems controlling? I mean, what's going on? Oh, Storm drops! Ah, uh, Storm drops. Did good damage. Ah, uh, good old Storm drops. Uh, Liberator's gonna get picked on off here. Pretty good for uh, Austria. It needs to mm, be very careful. Look at all these Storms! My god, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Two ghosts. Gonna be the boon uh, of this ter of the monster's army. Big uh, Widowmine connection. Not gonna happen. And he's gonna push on forward, and with a million storms, there's not really much you can do as far as uh, stopping this army goes. Wow, my, my. Is this gonna work? This is so silly. This doesn't deserve to work. Uh, two ghosts are gonna pop on out pretty soon here. 72 armor spot to 91. Now, Austria is gunning this fourth base back up again for like the millionth time this game. Like, oh my god. Uh, and actually. Uh, Asher is being very cautious, very careful. He doesn't want to accidentally like throw away this whole army because this is an army that's pretty easy to throw away. Uh, Storms gonna be able to be a good zone control. He probably can pick up the CC if he controls this correctly. Mm, doesn't look like it though. And yep, now there is no energy on this stuff bar, and he's gonna have to morph this in order to let his units get away. And that is gonna be a painful, painful start. Uh, of Masa's push here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean this all up, and then he should be moving right across the map. It's 3 2 to the 3 2. It's actually uh, plus 3 plus 2 to plus 3 plus 2 right now, which is actually very cool. Uh, also, very cool is that in for Protoss upgrades, armor first, then attack, but for Terran, attack first, then armor. Eh? Uh, pretty cool. Anyways, all of Masa's units are pretty much dead, but uh, you know, they just keep on going forward because Masa tells them to. What good, what good soldiers. Uh, these medevacs like have no energy left in them. One more like one more stim and one more storm, and these all these units die. Uh, so it's definitely still a very feasible hold for Austria. If he had a, an observer right here, I would have loved to see him uh, uh, pick off that liberator. Another good storm here. More units dead. More energy drained. Two more storms baited out though, and a uh, nice zealot counterattack. Meanwhile, Austria is holding on pretty well. I gotta give it to the guy. He's not losing without a fight, but economy wise. Economy wise, Masa is insane. Um, in fact, his production doesn't even support his econ uh, economy. Not buildings wise, this is fine. Uh, he should be pumping out ghosts like like crazy. Like, instead of former Marauders, former Ghost. And I guarantee you that will be amazing in every single way against the Protoss army forever. Uh, Austria probably tried to pick off a ghost there, it didn't work out. Uh, oh, missed the storm, and the EMP popped in the land. Oh, good feedback though! Good feedback. Uh, a counter ghost play, the good old fashioned way of feedback instead of war prisms. Uh, but yeah, Austria is not committing to anything, he's losing the units left and right, and it's, I think it's just going to be a bit too much here. Uh, a couple of good storms may be able to save it, but again, it took a little bit too long, and these units were able to pick up the fourth base once again. I think, very painfully, he's going to probably lose this game. Uh, I, I feel very sorry for him, but like, look at this, like, Remax from... Oh, <laughs> oh I knew it! He got the, he got the dump bar. Oh, Masa. Masa, like I said, this guy's like... He's very similar to Bjorn. I mean, he's, he's a very good, very solid player. Loves using his mechanics. And a very interesting guy to watch. Um, <sighs> not, uh, if you're a part of Masa's units, you probably don't like it. You probably, uh, you know, don't like it, but you know, it's whatever. All for Temple got EMP'd. Ashraya says, that's enough for me. GG is called, and Masa... Nope, definitely not, right? Takes a quick 3-0 advantage in this series. Goodness gracious me. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, Astra is getting out controlled left, right, front, center. I mean, Masa is just doing everything bigger, stronger, faster, better. <sighs> I don't know what to do if you're uh, Astra. I mean, I liked what he was doing in the beginning of the match. We saw him get aggressive and Masa was ca really caught off guard from that. He likes to play greedy early on to try and get that economy advantage, but um, I think if Astra plays a little bit more aggressively, he can at least maybe take a couple more games. So hopefully we can see more of that in the next game. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see as usual.
Astra needs, you know what Astra needs? This guy needs an everything bagel. Get his head back in the game, man. I mean, really. Oh, let's see. He's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking. He's thinking, he's thinking. What is going on in your mind, Astria? Alright, I'm gonna quickly grab some water here real quickly. It's best of seven. No, it's, it's best of nine. It's best of... It's best of nine! <laughs> no, 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 it ain't a best of... It ain't a best of... It ain't a best of five. You ain't getting off that easily. No, no, no. You're gonna be here for a while. That's how we do it at Alpha X. <laughs> Alright, water time. I'm good. Oh my goodness. Alright. Rock and roll. We're gonna go go with new repugnancy. I guess we're out of big maps in the map world, aren't we? Um, I guess there was still cyber forest left if you wanted to, but nah. uh, how do you even take a fourth in cyber forest against someone like Masa? How do you even? Like, wh 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 what are you gonna do? You're not gonna take a fourth against Masa. A fifth? Don't make me laugh. So, new repugnancy is going to be the choice. It's going to be his poison. New repugnancy. <laughs> Which map is that? Oh, yeah. It's this one. It has some ramps to defend your third and your natural, so definitely a little bit more defensive. Fourth base is very nice transition from the third base. Uh, so, honestly, I think that's a good choice. But again, Masa is just looking unstoppable so far. Ashria needs to mount some sort of offense, you know, maybe fix his defense, but it's easier to mix up your playstyle than to... Okay, in the best of nine, it's easier to mix up your playstyle to try and, you know, get an adventure of your opponent than to do the playstyle you're already doing, but better, right? I mean, it, it, you can't just be better. You, just, you can't go 110% in StarCraft. You can only go 100%, so you can't really go 110% and hope that that works out, right? So, you have to somehow change it up, you know, throw more strategies at the wall, see what sticks, try and go there, is my suggestion. But, it's not my choice, it is the choice of the man spawning in the bottom of 10 position of New Repugnancy. Representing Alpha X, it is Astrea. Got a long way to go if he wants to come back against his opponent, spawning in the top right hand position of New Repugnancy. Representing OSCE, it is a red Terran player, Masa. Quite a force to be reckoned with, quite a powerful Terran player indeed. This guy is just making our Astria look like a fiddle. And this guy is like the biggest bow in the goddamn world, like made out of horse and gopher hair. And that's like, like, and then it's like, damn, horse and gopher hair, how do you even, how do you even not get played for that? The answer is you don't not. Nobody doesn't not not. Nobody doesn't ever don't not. It's just that play. Alright. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Rax gas. Now New York Pregnancy. Big map again. I mean, not big map. Medium sized map. And again, there are a lot of these kind of medium sized maps. I would say this is the smallest medium sized map. Uh, you know, just because it's not too far between bases like that's... Like, this isn't that much of a rush distance, if we're being honest here. Especially in these 4th base locations are very close together. 
Uh, and in this middle part over here is, is very interesting. So let's zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see it better. Uh, if, if both players take this fourth base over here, I would love to see a game like that in New York Park because I don't really know what would happen. Would they like fight in this kind of choky area over here? Would they try and like come around, you know, like this and try and hit from the high ground from a ramp? I mean, th this these debris in the middle really complicates things a lot. Um, so I'm very excited to see how that turns out. If it does get to that state, uh, my guess is that uh, Astria is probably not going to let it get that far, but we'll see. Um, Astri actually starting off with a Zealot and a Cybercore, so th is he just assuming that there's a... Yeah, he didn't even scout, he's just assuming that there's a proxy. And he's going for an Adept 2 and a Stargate, right in the face of Masa. I am very confused here. Uh, I don't know why you would do this against your, your opponent, you know? Uh, is he gonna go for some aggression? And if so, it's some very blatantly obvious, easily scouted aggression, you know? Uh, but hey, you know what? Whatever fiddle is your diddle, you know, it's what you do. Whatever you do, man, whatever you do. For me, it's like everything bagels, so like I'm not one to judge. I definitely not one to judge. Wait, wait, 101. 20. There we go. Oh, what's happening? There we go. Third base coming down for Astria. Probably not gonna be able to. S oh, probably going to be able to save this probe. Haha. -ha. Start up a phoenix. Mess with his brain. Do it, Ashria. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Reaper is gonna go ahead and get on out of here. Safe and sound. Uh, Zelda is across the map. I guess he was gonna try... Hang on. We have more important stuff to talk about. Oh, <laughs> This if he looks like he was a dog. Like he was a dog Like when he grabs like a rope and he's like dangling in it. It's like... <laughs> But anyways, motorboarding aside, <laughs> motorboarding my poor keyboard <laughs> aside, let's go ahead and get back into this game. It is actually a phoenix? Wait, wait, what? No, Astria, it was a joke. It was a joke. Oh my god, he's making phoenix? Uh, but, but why did he have to delay his natural for that? Uh, th is he just mind gaming? I think he's just mind gaming. Uh, or maybe he's just memeing. I don't know. Maybe he's just like, fuck it. We're gonna confuse this guy so hard that he's just gonna have to give us a win. And now we're Robo. I literally have never even seen anything remotely close to this playstyle before in my life, so... Guys, I have no idea. I, I seriously don't. Um, he made three Phoenix, right? Three? One, two, three? Okay. Uh, you, you need four Phoenix, I think, to uh, one-shot workers. Yeah, yeah, 20, 40... Yeah, SCBs. To one-shot SCBs, you need uh, three Phoenix... You need four Phoenixes, one to lift them, three to shoot. Uh, same for Marines, so... Okay, there we go. He's making one more. There we go. Okay. There we go. Takes the mule action. Now, it's always kind of risky when you pick up a mule because you don't know how much time is left on it. But in that case, it was good. Good little play from uh, Astria tonight. His opponent, like, maybe 90 minerals or so. A little annoying stuff. It's whatever. So, it looks as though Astria is just going to insert himself on the map with these phoenixes, I guess. And just transition to kind of like a normal standard macro game. I guess he just kind of wanted to scare Mass at the beginning. Um, I don't know. I would love to talk to uh, Ashria and maybe have like an interview after the match, uh, but we don't really do that, so that's okay. But it, it would definitely be very fun to see, I think. Uh, is he going Phoenix Colossus? That actually may be what this is. Because um, mm, he's, make, like, he's making an Immortal right now. That doesn't mean it's not Phoenix Colossus. Sometimes you just need that Immortal as that backbone for your army to take out those, you know, Marauders. Uh, but he stopped Phoenix production. He definitely has the gas for more Phoenixes, so it's not going to be Phoenix... Uh, Colossus, it appears. And, uh, yeah, Master just kind of getting his third base up. Not really making that many units, actually. Oh! Uh, what am I got a good shot there. Gonna go and get picked up, though, for its trouble. And, oop! Oop, the lock-on! Needs to lift up the thing! Mmm, that's okay. He loses two Phoenixes, though. Very painful. Uh, I swear, if he starts making Colossus... So, is it actually Phoenix Colossus? Or maybe it was... Okay, so, there's a difference between Phoenix Colossus... And Phoenix into Colossus, and looks like he's doing Phoenix into Colossus, but he's remaking, he's remaking the uh, the Phoenixes. So I I don't understand this very well. Uh, why did he not make Phoenixes for such a long time? Uh, maybe he just doesn't have the build order like you know refined, or maybe it's so refined that he couldn't afford the Phoenixes. I don't know. In any case, he needs to get the Phoenix sound up much higher than it already is right now if he wants to go for Phoenix Colossus. Like this, getting a couple SCBs and moving on back. 
And yeah, I mean, the army from Masa is pretty unimpressive right now, and if, if you're not going for a two-base aggression as Masa, and you're going, just going for uh, three bases, then having these Phoenixes is going to be uh, quite the boon, because there's not really much that you can do against them. You don't really have that many units, you're just trying to get your economy up and running, so these Phoenixes are going to take control of the game for the time being, so that is already miles ahead of any game that Ashri has played so far, and it's actually moving across the map. Uh, for some reason, known only to God himself, and maybe Command Satan. Maybe, maybe, maybe he caught a glimpse of this. Nope. Hey, Houdina, hey, would you look at that? Phoenix's counters missile turrets. Who would've thought, huh? Alright, Phoenixes are gonna move across the map. Look at this, it's like a bunch of Phoenixes, a Colossus, and like an Immortal. And th there's literally like three gateway units here. And I was actually fearing for Masa too. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, is Masa gonna lose? <laughs> I really was thinking that. I think if Ashray didn't lose those two Phoenixes at the beginning of the game, I think he could have. I think he could have. I think he could have killed Masa there. Or at least done some good damage. Uh, but now I think Masa's getting the response that he needs. He's getting his Brutal Minds up. He's getting a nice, healthy base of Marines. Third base is already established for Astria, so a nice little advantage over there. These Phoenixes are really, uh, really, uh, <laughs> really getting the hell killed out of them. Jesus. Uh, no, you gotta send this Phoenix and pick up that Cyclone. That's okay. Uh, I guess he didn't want to risk it. That's okay. He lost another. How many Phoenixes did he lose? Five Phoenixes. Imagine if he had eight Phoenixes right now. It wouldn't even be a game at this point. It would just be like, you know, Astria walking over on the other side of the map and killing Masa. I mean, that's just really what it would be. Honestly. And I actually think Phoenix Colossus is the perfect counterpart to Masa's playstyle. Phoenix is for the drops, Colossus for the tech advantage, so Masa just can't stay on bio forever. Uh, that would be really cool. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, 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 don't. Do, no, no, do, do, stop, stop it. St you know it's there. You don't have to scare me. No, the. Okay. Here we go. Oh no, here he goes! Moss is gonna jump around right top of the army, and one Colossus does go down, but wow, that was a lot of bio. And now the Phoenix says, you know what they say, got oh, I don't like that. I think he should have gone for the Metavax. Uh, Moss is probably pretty happy with that, but you know what they say, guys, there's no running from a fight with Phoenixes. That's probably not what they say, you know, they say, there's probably not even a they, but like, uh, it's, it's just common knowledge in StarCraft. You lose a fight against Phoenixes, you're not running back home. Without some severe casualties, at least. Anyways, Master decides to move across the map, which I don't think is extraordinarily correct against Phoenix Colossus. I think you gotta stay back home a little bit. I think, like, you know, you, you really need that... <gasps> Astra! Imagine if you had six more Phoenixes right now. It wouldn't even be a game. Yeah, I'm not... I'm, I'll shut up now, I promise. Alright, now this is just... This I don't know. I have no idea how to explain any of this, so we're just gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. Alright, back to the game. Oh, wait... There we go. Masa being a little bugger there. Uh, drops into the main base, takes a couple of Colossus. Gotta be careful not getting a stand on top of like that. Ah, loses a Colossus. Oh my goodness. Uh, and the Phoenixes are probably gonna jump on top of this, but yeah. Now people are taking some nasty Widowmind shots. Uh, no Marines over here to contest these uh, Phoenixes, so they can just lift everything up. That's fine. And these units are low health anyway, so Phoenixes should be enough here, but gets unpowered. Needs to make sure he picks up these uh, mines too. Does he see them? I don't know, but it, he probably doesn't have the time because his fourth base is under attack as well. Uh, he did not take uh, the more conventional um, closer spots for the third and fourth base. I, wouldn't, I didn't even know if those are conventional, but I didn't take them. And it's a little bit unfortunate uh, how spread of thin he is, because look at this. He's just being spread this way and that, dragged all over the place. Did that, was that a Colossus? Yeah, he lost another Colossus. Oh no, and he's losing more workers. Masa is all over the place! My god, look at these units! What is he gonna do? Nothing? Alright, but still. Ah, what a painful game if you're Astria, right? I mean, like, it feels like no matter what Astria does, Masa gets in there and he just, like, like spaghetti squashes his brain all over the place. It's like, it's like nothing he can do works. And now he's just making a bunch of phoenixes, which I think is hilarious, but still. Uh, probably shouldn't contest this army. Uh, how many marines is that? Uh, actually, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, well, maybe, and then I was like, no. Uh, so he's making a bunch of phoenixes with plus two air attacks and range. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wake up now and cast the actual Master vs. Astria game. Alright, good night, you guys. It's been an honor. See you guys later.
What is? I've never seen this in. I guess I've seen this before. Uh, maybe like once. Because it does. It does kind of ring a bell. Like having a million phoenixes with range in uh, PVT, especially with Colossus, and that's why you gotta be careful when you pick up against Phoenix Colossus. 15 supply down the drain. That's okay. Not 15. That was like what? Like 10? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, that was like 10 supply. That's okay. Oh, okay for Phoenix. Gonna go ahead and escape there. And yeah, Phoenixes with range are a real threat to Metabax. Now, Ashria is trying to remake his Colossus count. I definitely do appreciate it. He, should, he can pick these up. He can pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. 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 Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. 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 If those are all his Marines, oh, I think Ashria needs to pull the trigger. Oh, that kind of sucks. But I guess he's. Mm, it's fine. Missed opportunities. Not too. <gasps> do you have an observer? Of course you don't. Okay. Uh, um, that's okay, that's okay. Imagine how good a uh, tunneling cause would have been. Would have been crazy. Tunneling cause would have been crazy. Oh, is Asher gonna get. Mmm, so close. He's not gonna find it though. Just barely not gonna find it though. I think. Okay, yeah, now he's gonna find it. Now Ashria is gonna get really punished for this drop. Oh my god. Uh, these Colossi have to defend this base in the meanwhile. Uh, yeah, these. Yeah, they're, they're all gonna go down, but unfortunately Ashria is out of position and he's gonna lose his fourth base location. Uh, especially considering he doesn't have anything to de detect the widow mines. All the widow mines explode on literally all of the zealous, literally the best connection that could have possibly existed. So it sucks to be him. And 15 uh, zealots, uh, 15 uh, probes still end up going down. But now I think um, Astria might just have a little bit too much of uh, Phoenix wise. Uh, with no ghost in production, with just still straight up bio. I think the Phoenixes can lift this entire army and be fine. And Master's still going for drops. God, if, I mean, if I, if this doesn't work for if Australia loses this game, I have no idea how he wins. No, pick those up, pick, pick it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can pick all everything here up. That's fine. That is a okay, a okay with me. There he goes. In fact, he has enough on the opposite side of the map. Uh, he should be careful about any aggressive warpins. Uh, there's a warpin in the main base. Uh, there's a drop going to the main base rather for Masa. Uh, just full of marauders and widow mines, like whatever. And uh, Masa is actually for the first time in the series looking to lose against Astria. This Phoenix count is just insane. I uh, needed these ghosts like yesterday, so it's definitely getting really punished for his lack of tech here. Uh, there we go. Uh, a lot of damage going down in the main base though, so Phoenix is forced to pull back and kill like, literally everything. <laughs> oh no, boo hoo, poor Astria has to gets to kill everything. No, I'm just kidding. But somehow he still finds himself at a army supply. Well, it's actually even an arm spy, but it has a huge worker deficit. Masa just has to weather the storm right now and just calm down, recollect his army, get a couple of ghosts out, and get those EMPs on those damn phoenixes. Sorry, I'm in Proto Spy. I don't know why I said damn phoenixes. I love you, babies. Please kill this entire mineral line. Thank you. Thank you, babies. There we go. That's what daddy like. And now you fly back. You fly away. Fly away. Oh, oh, is he looking for it? I think he's looking for it. Master's looking for the EMP. He gets it down one, two good EMPs. They get an okay amount of the Phoenixes. Uh, still a very impressive amount. Um, and there's still a couple of EMPs left in this army. Three more ghosts about to pop out too. The army for uh, uh, Masa has finally uh, gotten what needs to deal with the Phoenixes. There's ghosts, there's widow mines. And now, there is, while there isn't any Vikings, and while these uh, class I can still probably kill this entire army, if Masa isn't careful, it's a lot more precarious. For Astria. Now, um, mm, hmm. Again, he's very marine heavy. Uh, just to just to help deal with those, um, you know, he has, he has two pages. Yes, what? Like, that's 12, 24, it's 25? 25? Yeah, like 28 ish Marines. Uh, to, deal with, to help deal with his Phoenixes, but I think uh, Masa is just gonna do what he does best. Out position Astria. Here we go. He's gonna go ahead and launch an assault on that fourth base. The concave is good at the top. The Phoenixes are trying to pick everything up, but they clump up too much and they EMP. Everything that goes today, but there are still four Colossus. Nothing too shabby. This immortal 12, 13 kills really worth its weight in gold right now. But the Phoenixes just can't pick everything up. Now, Asa just ended up getting the base, but he trades out his entire army. The Phoenixes are just too numerous in number, and they're all gonna go down. And remember what I said about Phoenixes? You can't run away from Phoenixes. Uh, does he have the. He doesn't have any uh, energy on these Phoenixes. Uh, he, had, he had one pickup, uh, two pickups. And Masa is now down uh, 30 armor supply. Are these? No, no, Masa. Masa, don't do it to him. D he has a family. No! <laughs> Astria has a family. The guy has a mother. Oh my god.
I'm at a loss for words. This is such a great game so far. <laughs> I'm really loving this. Uh, Drilling Claws, so uh, he can kill these phoenixes a little bit better. Mr. Chur is going to be there to deflect any possible phoenix shenanigans. And now it's three bases to four. Uh, yeah, and uh, these bases are looking really anemic for both players. Now, phoenixes in these low economy situations, they get a lot of value. A lot, a lot of value. So, you know, we're very, very happy for the... Uh, we're very happy for these phoenixes right now. I mean, how many kills have these phoenixes gotten so far? Probably like a like a hell of a lot, right? One, like four, three, five. Uh, like probably each one on average got like three kills. So there's probably like 60 kills in this entire Phoenix army. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Maybe like 50 or 40, but that's still a lot of kills. Masa, again, he's struggling to find that balance between Marauders, Marines, and Ghosts. It's a very fickle balance. You don't have enough Marines, the Phoenixes pick up everything. But I think... Marauder Ghost should be the composition he goes for, along with some Widowmind support. Uh, Drilling Claws also uh, as well. I think right now he does need Marines. Uh, looking at his, you know, looking at the Grand Army for Astria, he just needs his Marauders, and he needs EMPs on the Phoenixes. He needs good connections for the Widowmines, and should be able to take the game. But man, man, what a good game so far! Like I'm literally like Neil. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh, do, 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 do. <gasps> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I mean, um, oh wow, that was good. Ah, uh, a little bit of an uh, unfortunate misstep. Ah, uh, oh, uh, mm, can't even pick up the Phoenix, the Widow Mines. Phoenix Karen is starting to get worse and worse. 31 Phoenixes killed this game. No, it's, it's a lot less of a big deal when you're fighting on these sort of scales. Mm, no, no, mm. Okay, the bio on the ground is gonna try and take care of this. I mean, it's going to do it. GG is called, and Masa, 4-0 over Austria so far. What a sick series. What a sick, 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 capital K series. My god, I can't wait to see. I mean, Astria gets to choose the map again, but... He is shook. I, there is no doubt in my mind that Ashria shook AF. I mean, look at this. Look at this engagement right here. Look at that beautiful engagement where Masa had nothing. Where, like, literally Ashria was, like, tripling the army supply of Masa. And Masa just came back and donked him in the face with a, you know, donking machine called Masa. I mean, what the hell? It's crazy. But anyways, he gets one last game. I'm very excited to see. Who is this Romsley? I saw him in WCS Winter too. I don't know. But um, yeah, just ugh, crazy game so far. Crazy games. I can't wait to see the last game, what Ashra pulls out. I think this may be his effort game, where he goes for that one base DT, blink, Phoenix lift the ghost so they can't EMP the Dark Templar so they stay hidden game. I hope. <laughs> but we'll have to see. <laughs> Ashra is thinking. <laughs> he's putting on his thinking cap. <laughs> he's uh, his brains are working. It's getting to work. <laughs> oh man. Whew, sorry guys, I'm a little tired. Um. <laughs> Alpha row series fifty-three. There we go. <laughs> wow, the price pool for this game so far is fifty-three dollars. Well, it's pretty amazing, ain't it? Uh, wow. All right, so the winner of this uh, series will get seventy-four dollars and forty cents. The runner-up, Astria, maybe, probably, hopefully not, is gonna get eighteen dollars and sixty cents. We're gonna have to wait and see, but damn, pretty good price pool so far. 
Astria says go automation. All right. Last game looks like it's gonna be an automation. Let's see you guys. What? Was that a Twitch alert streamlapse thing? No. No way. Uh-uh. <laughs> you guys are hearing things. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating from all that goodness of the... Uh, oh, shit, I think someone laced that everything bagel. God damn it. And that was my usual crack either. you guys let's see spawning in the middle right position of automation representing alpha x he's got a long road ahead of him but hey you know journey of a thousand miles begins with a single pylon it is my friend and yours astria from alpha x And spawning in the middle left position of automation representing osc elite gaming Absolutely dominating our very own Astria. It is the one and only Red Terran player, Masa. Incredibly aggressive, incredibly biofocused, incredibly micro based player. Just so hard to shut down this guy. I think Astria had the right idea last game. The Phoenixes were doing good work, they were denying Masa left and right. I just think, I don't know, maybe if Astria builds his bases closer together, maybe he has a little bit of a better chance. Maybe if you can chose a little bit better, it was definitely a winnable game, and I would love to see Astria pull it off again against Masa. I think it is possible. I think it is not only. I think it is. I think it's also his best chance, quite frankly. You know, to to take out this like titan of a Terran player. Uh, I, I don't see how else he can defeat him. I mean, he's tried pretty much everything else. I mean, like, well, he hasn't tried all inning him yet. He hasn't tried anything super aggressive, super crazy aggressive. Like for example, a one base. Uh, a one base would be pretty fun to see. Maybe some proxy void rays. Maybe slap them down right here and go to prismatic alignment town. But hey, you know, I ain't no, I ain't no specialist. And let's see, CC going down. Now Masa is actually just something interesting. A walled off his main here, so he doesn't want Australia to see what is going on. Though so far it's just kind of a, a CC. I think it's just going to be a three CC build. Uh, judging by the lack of gas, I definitely don't see it being anything else, because everything else would just be so delayed. Like, you can't start up a factory in Starport right now, right? So, Astria has to bring the dark for the time being, and I would love to see a Stargate just so we can see what is going on. Um, you know, and if you do see a... Ooh, I guess when you're four games ahead, you know, why not? Why the hell not? So... Ash is gonna go ahead. He's not gonna scout. I mean, he's gonna scout someplace. He's gonna see if there's any proxies around the map. And I guess there is technically a proxy, but uh, not 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 the way that Astria is probably thinking. Uh, two CCs on the way. If this gold base gets up and running, and Masa has that gold base, oh my god, I don't even know what uh, Astria will do. Though Astria is a very competent player, I you know I fully expect him to at least put up a good fight. He put up a great one last game, anyway. So I think he may be starting to figure out this Masa kid. <laughs> But let's see. Stalker on its way across the map. Uh, just trying to see what is up. Now, he, remember, he doesn't know anything. Right now, for all I strip. Hmm. <sighs> Never mind. I was going to say, for all he knows, there could be like a factory up here, you know, and a starport, and he's going to get like all in by a kitchen sink build, you know? Uh, a little bit of unfortunate placement there on that building for Masa. That kind of sucks. Oh. Is that, yep, SCB is gonna go down! Oh, that kinda sucks, though. There's more SCBs for backup. 
Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And actually, the Marines are gonna get this Stalker away from here. Guys, save Maddie, I know. Amazing Spagar. And the three CCs are landed for Masa. Now it is Masa's turn to defend against the multi prong of Astria because, my god, can you do so many things to a Terran in this situation? Especially opening Robo? Get a War Prism? Throw down some, like, go to like five gates? I don't know. Be, go crazy. Now is the time to really, really stress the Terran player. If you sit back, you are not going to win this game. It, it's as simple as that. You're not going to win this game if you sit back. So, I definitely appreciate Astria. Uh, you know, getting this Warp Prism, he has an Immortal now. Uh, I would love to see more Gateways too, that would be an amazing sight to behold to my beautiful, lovely, long-lashed eyes, because uh, uh, Terran just does not have enough. Especially he doesn't even have any bunkers. Okay, the dude doesn't even have a bunker at this base, like what? I mean, he deserves to die at this point. Alright, Masa, I think he's just gonna straight up die here. You need a bunker, mate. You need a bunker. You don't not need a bunker, you need a yes bunker. Alright, but anyways, Astria's gonna go for a slightly more solid plan here. He's gonna just deny mining from the space by standing behind the by standing behind the mineral line and mm, get some damage on that war prism. Concussive shell is finished, so has to be very careful about his positioning. Does Astria and still no bunkers? My God, this mad lad! I don't know why he's not going for. Pro okay. This may, this may be a very compelling reason why. Gonna go an elevator on into the main base of Masa. Undoubtedly, he's gonna take a lot of damage. Gets supply blocked as well. And Stim, absolutely not gonna finish. Alright, Astria, this is your time to shine. This is uh, probably as good as it gets versus this kid, Masa. Uh, good queue up of additional Marauders before those tech ups go down, though. Uh, pulling the boys, here he goes. The forest fields are okay, could be better. Could be better. Uh, a lot of SCDs going down though. Uh, here we go. The micro is fine. Uh, is he gonna get the immortal? He does. And now it's just kind of gateway units against his marine marauder style. And I think that Masa is gonna hold off against this, but not before losing his entire mineral line and a decent amount of his add ons. Now we can only make marines out of these, which does kind of suck if your name is Masa. Uh, and look, he's just gonna pick up his more prism and move on over, mosey on over to the skull base location. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, he's probably gonna. I called it. I called it. My mouse is over here. You guys saw it. I was thinking about it. I said he's probably gonna move his base on over here. Just knock these rocks down. You know, it's whatever. Knock the rocks down. Mine from the gold min. Don't even. You can't even mine from the gold minerals. Uh, no, you can. Uh, I guess you can. Whatever. So for the first time in the entire series, Ashra looks in control of this game. He's got his three gateways, he's going for double forks, he's going for more gateways, he does not want to take a third quite yet. He likes the way things are going, he likes the amount of damage he's doing, he wants to just keep it rocking. Now three adepts in the main base, and Masa is getting pulled left, right, and center. Uh, not really much this kid, uh, you know, he can do. Now this is definitely more than enough to get these three adepts out of here, but Masa's push is coming. And boy, is it coming fast. Uh, one, two, three, four gateways, they are not finished just yet, but two immortals. Those are, that is pretty dangerous. Those are, those are some pretty dangerous damage dealers to this marauder heavy force of Masa. Uh, Colossus is also on the way to, like, Masa has like a very narrow window right now. He has like 30 more seconds to maybe make some magic happen, but it seems he wants to decide against that, he pulls them back for the time being. Which I don't agree with. 26 to 47 workers, you gotta make something happen. I mean, Astria is just picking Masa apart in this game, left and right. There's just, I don't know. It, it's looking really bad. Especially the, since Mas, uh, Astria is gonna have a Colossus very soon, as well as his. Oh, not double forge, just single forge. Uh, yeah, seven zealots, right. Mmm, well. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much you can do here as Masa, though. 28 workers to 47 is, is a very rough situation to be in. Uh, especially when you have two Immortals, a bunch of Zealots, some, you know, Colossus even, uh, to uh, to uh, defend against. Uh, I don't know what Masa's gonna do, but we'll have to see. Uh, Stim is gonna finish up here kinda soonish. Uh, he's not gonna have plus one, but he's definitely gonna have Stim. So maybe he can use that to his advantage, set up an insane surround. I think Astria scouts it out anyways. Um, not actually going for a surround here, uh, actually. Mm. Uh, Marine gonna go ahead and proc the barrier on that uh, Immortal. And uh, I think, is Masa just gonna go for the base race? I think he is. Oh, Masa, move, move, move your, move your workers. There we go. Uh, is he gonna start lifting? I don't know. I don't know, where are, the, where are these rallied to? Over here? I guess he wants to come from behind, so he doesn't want a base race. Ooh, a little bit of unfortunate positioning over there, actually. 
And Astria is gonna probably set himself up in a very good position here. He's gonna move all forward uh, to the natural base. The Observer's already here to uh, scout it out for him, so Astria knows he's in the clear. And he's gonna march straight up into the main base, and Masa was just kind of just kind of let it happen. He did. I think going for a base. Uh, race would have been uh, the best choice. This dim is down, and he's gonna go ahead and move up the ramp, see if he can do anything. Masa having to push into his own main ramp. This is probably the worst way he probably could fade this out. Masa loses the first game of the series, and GG is called, and Astria finally puts himself on the scoreboard with one game. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. Finally. Then again, Masa did go for something extremely crazy that game, and Astria just absolutely scouted it out early enough and punched his face in. I think if Masa goes for a normal macro game, it may be a little bit more close, but we'll see. You know, you know guys, journey of a thousand miles and all that, so let's see. I think the last map is, or rather, the last two maps, actually, uh, Phoenix Sears just t told us it is Year Zero and Cyber Forest, so we are very excited for that. I think he's gonna be year zero. I think he's gonna pick year zero. That's just my guess, though. Yeah, yeah, year zero. Did I guess year zero? I think I did. Super pretty map, if you couldn't tell from uh, last uh, pro series I cast a couple hours ago. I absolutely love year zero. It looks amazing. Oh, okay. Looks like we actually have a quick break coming up from Astrea here. So we do have a little bit of downtime, so you guys can just go ahead and chill for just a second. I have to uh, rest my voice as well, so we are just going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will have Masa versus Astrea. Astrea <laughs> says, sorry, one sec, P. <laughs> oh, I love pro gamers. All right. Let's just chill then. He has to take his one sec, P.
Okie dokie guys. Only thing we can do now is Ow, my heart. Is introduce my players. That's not a good sign. Jesus. <laughs> Spawning the top right position of year zero. Representing Alpha X, it is a rare Protoss player, Astria. Taking the last game away from Masa, picking him apart as he has picked him apart so, so, so many games before. And if nothing else, a good, nice little bit of sweet, sweet revenge. It's kind of a weird pixelated sort of thing, ain't it? It's kind of weird. That's okay. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand position of Year Zero. Representing OSC Gaming, it is a blue tier player, Masa. Ooh, and the music changed up, and we all know why that is, because Masa decides to be a dirty boy. And proxy of barracks on the opposite side of the map. Now, probably... Wait, is that, in the, is that a ramp? Yeah, that's a ramp. Uh, probably it's gonna be just a Reaper, in which case, I don't know why you didn't proxy it over here to the little closer, but it's a little less, a little more tucked away, but it's whatever. Another, uh, uh, finder going on down. Another barracks actually coming out from Alsa. Ooh, okay, so now I have less than an idea of what this could be. Probably it's gonna be Proxy Mass Reaper? That could be a thing? Uh, I know Masa would definitely love a build like Proxy Mass Reaper, so not gonna discount that just yet. Um, Maybe he's gonna make a factory too. It may just be a full on proxy my base on your side of the map and try and kill you sort of build. And that seems to be what is happening here. Three barracks going down. Proxy three racks reaper. Oh my god, it is Diet Beyond. I knew it! I totally called it. My analogy is perfect. Uh... Okay. Um, but, anyways, this is, a, this is a little bad for Astria. Uh, getting a stalker up, chrono boosting that out, getting a robo uh, immediately. I would, I would say, man, this guy needs a shield battery ASA pronto. Uh, especially if you're gonna skimp out on the zealot, it's, it's pretty well served as a shield battery if you are. But then again, you, you don't really know what this is. Uh, but we know what it is. Aha, we know, we know what it is. We know what the hell this is. This is gonna be mass reapers, you guys. And my God, if Astro doesn't get a shield battery or additional gate. Uh, keep the unit soon. He's gonna be in for the ride of his life. Three Reapers uh, can definitely not kill a stalker. Uh, they can, yeah, they can probably take on a stalker very well, especially with an SCV for support. This stalker started up super late. There's no really any sh shield batteries left. Yeah, these these stalkers are. Oh my God, this stalker's gonna die. This spacing grenade is gonna go and take it out, and now it's just three Reapers against a million bajillion probes. And you don't need me to tell you how that's going to turn out. Shield battery number one goes on down. Astria needs more minerals to start more units, to get more shield batteries, to get more defenses. But he can't because he has to pull his workers. He needs to focus down the low reapers, not the ones that are at full health. And he's going to lose his stalker again as he runs into every single grenade. Uh, I think that's just it. Astria is going to go ahead and lose in spectacular fashion. GG is called and Masa takes a series from Astria. Five games to one. Ugh. What a brutal, 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 brutal way to go out. Ah, my gosh. Poor Astria. Poor, poor Astria, man. Poor Astria. But you know what? He put up a good fight. And you know what? Looking at the price pool really quickly, how much he's going to get? Our man Astria is going to get himself a good old fashioned $18.70. Meanwhile, our friend Master, the macro the micro king at this point is going to win himself $74.80 and that is going to be it for me. Folks, my name is Swagar. I hope do hope so 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 much that you guys enjoyed my casting. Uh, if you did, be sure to go ahead and follow us on Astrea. Give us a up or a star sticker show whatever i don't know what it is but you guys know what it is and if you could do that that would be amazing so yeah go ahead and do that if you can again name swagger hope you enjoyed my casting and make sure to check in next sunday where we probably will have another alpha x pro series though maybe not i actually don't know that's okay um i think i'm gonna stop talking because i have nothing else to talk about and uh yeah i'll see you guys later thanks for tuning on in Mwah. that'd be amazing so yeah, go ahead and do that if you can. Again, my name's Swagar. Hope you enjoyed my casting. And make sure to check in next Sunday where we probably will have another Alpha X Pro series. Though maybe not. I actually don't know. That's okay. Um, I think I'm going to stop talking because I have nothing else to talk about. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys.